everybody, what's happening? This is Keeping It Real Fishing, and today I'd like to show you the Luz BB1 Pro Series Baitcast Reel. As of the making of this video, this is a relatively new reel. It was announced for iCast 2013 back in uh, July, and this uh, kind of picks up where the BB1 left off, namely in an external centrifugal cast control. Uh, but I'll talk about that and some of its other features uh, as we take a closer look at the Luz BB1 Pro Series. Alright guys, so I just got this reel. I haven't used it yet. I'm showing you what you're going to get if you do decide to uh, try this reel out. Looking at some of our features here. Uh, an aluminum frame. Uh, these side plates both side plates are not aluminum, they are a, a composite, some kind of carbon composite. This is the big ad here, this is the, the new thing, this uh, external centrifugal system, so we're going to take a closer look at that, it's pretty unique. Um, carbon composite drag, uh, let's see, U-shaped spool, okay. Comes in at a, a really lightweight, 6.5 ounces, I liked it to get the 7.1 gear ratio. There's the part number for the left hand, high speed one, the 7.1. And just so you guys know, I noticed this online uh, on their site too. There's like a promotion thing you can click on, and depending on var you know various products, you get different things. But uh, you can get the hoodie, or actually on the site, there's also kind of like a waterproof yellow uh, bag with a lot of compartments on it, which I'm actually going to send in for. I, I don't really need the hoodie, uh, but I could use that that bag, particularly if it's uh, kind of what water, uh, water resistant. So check that out. If, uh, if you're looking to get any loose products, they have some uh, some freebies there. You just pay for shipping. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Okay, inside the box. It's pretty minimal. Um, I always wish reels were packaged a little bit better in like some foam or something that actually held them. I guess it doesn't matter, right? They're going to be used pretty hard out there, but uh, some manufacturers kind of go the extra mile, particularly Bass Pro Shops on their uh, the Johnny Morris series. It's like they have a a whole presentation case, I think that's really cool. Past a certain price point, I would always like to see the kind of uh, box and everything match the reel. I guess uh, this might not fall into there, it's kind of a mid-priced reel. And what you're going to get, obviously the reel, and just some paperwork, you don't get any tools, you don't get any oil or anything like that. You have a breakdown sheet of all your parts, pretty standard fare. For any manufacturer, you're going to get a breakdown sheet. And you do get some information here. It talks specifically about this reel, which is always nice. It's not just general information. Um, they go into some of the details there. <clears throat> and the only other thing is your warranty card, which they ask that you send in. That's it. That's all you're going to get. But there's nothing wrong with that. What we're interested in is the reel. Okay, first of all, uh, let's take a close look. That's always one of the things I try to do, I like to do in my videos, is to give you that kind of 360 all around video perspective uh, to get a better look of, at least of the aesthetics that you might not be able to get from various sites just looking at still images. So you're going to see that carbon fiber handle. It's a real carbon fiber weave. It's not simulated. Right now we're just going to just going to spin it around for a minute here, guys, just so you can get a close-up look at some of the details, the coloring and everything else. And then we'll actually get into uh, just some initial impressions, and I'll tell you uh, the things that I have read up on on this reel, what uh, features it brings to the table. Lubrication port. Okay, I think we've seen pretty much all we're going to see. Okay guys, so the BB-1, um, let's, let me consolidate here and, and focus, if I can remember, on the main things that distinguish this from the previous generation. 
as I recall, I believe there's three. The biggie, the main main thing is this here, is the external centrifugal uh, brake system. The next is going to be your carbon fiber handle, which I particularly like because like some of the higher end diodes, you could actually see the layers of carbon fiber sandwiched if you look at it, the cross section. If you look at it on, on the side here, I like that. Some of the manufacturers, they just kind of uh, gloss the whole thing over and you don't actually see that. I, I do like that. And of course you can see the weave from either side. So it's a very nice looking handle. Um, so differences. Centrifugal cast control, brake. This spool is what they call braid ready. And you see that little cutout right there? All it means, I'm going to spin it some more, right there. It's not, a, you know, like a, a drilled spool. But they put one, you know, they drilled through it in one spot right there. So you pass your line through there and the hole goes through to the other side. This way you don't have to, uh, if you choose not to put on backing or anything like that, you can just tie directly to the spool. Um, another difference, which um, you actually don't see here, I guess it's a fourth difference, is internally this uses the uh, duralumin, dur aluminum, I'm saying it wrong, but it's the aluminum gearing. A lot of people are using it. I forget the uh, exact terminology. It's like D-U-R aluminum. It's short for aluminum. And it's using that for the main gearing as opposed to the first generation BB-1, which uh, I'm not sure what that used, but looking at pictures, I believe that was brass. So the idea there is to get the internals a little bit lighter. So between that and the carbon fiber, hand carbon fiber handle, they shaved it down to 6.5 ounces uh, versus the last generation, which was 7.1. I do have a scale here. We could put Bring it on, on the there. scale. And I just did this before. It should be a tick over six and a half, actually. Yeah, I mean, you're talking a, a tenth of an ounce. No big deal. So uh, 6.6, .6, well, went up to 6.65. I guess it was teetering on the edge there. So you figure roughly six and a half ounces. You know, that's, that's no big deal. Um, all right, so now let's pick these features apart, starting with the centrifugal brake. Now the loose system, to get to that centrifugal brake, you don't have to open it now, but we want to open it uh, to take a look at it. Uh, actually, before I do that, I guess I could just show you the dial. I do like that it has a dial. This system here is, is very similar in its approach to really where everybody's going right now, if you've noticed. Shimano has, um, oh, what is it called? The, the new Cronarch um, CI4 has the, uh, the adjustable on the outside, and it's centrifugal but it uses the same mechanism. All these new centrifugal systems that you can adjust from the outside are using a similar centrifugal system such that the pins don't fly out to the edges like, uh, like most Shimano's have and other manufacturers have, but they fly out in this dimension. They go from here outwards against a plate that's in there, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But I do like the Lou's interpretation of it better simply because the dial is, is marked. Um, I think the Shimano dial is marked, but Abu Garcia also has the, I think it's IVCB4. Uh, they have it on the Revo Premier and on the MGX, very similar system. Um, but it, I just like having it marked. Uh, it kind of just makes sense to me. If I have a particular setting that works well, I could just look down and, and know that I'm there, as opposed to the Abu Garcia, which has no markings whatsoever. And I believe the Shimano does have some. Uh, so let's take a close look at this and see what distinguishes it, makes it interesting. Uh, if you didn't notice right there, there's just a pin here. You pull out that pin and you spin this up. Okay, let's take a closer look at the inside. Now you see I just got it. I haven't cleaned it or anything. It comes uh, greased up, that runner there. And so here's the system. <clears throat> This is called the, oh, I have to go back. This is called the Adjustable Centrifugal Brake. They call it the ACB Speedcast 6-Pin System. Okay, you can see those brake shoes there, or brake pins, whatever you want to call them. They're not just pins now, they kind of have a shape to them, which is, of course, purposeful in its design. 
Now there's no springs here. All right, so these things, all six of them are kind of free to do as they please. But I just went over this pretty thoroughly and I noticed something very interesting about the design of these brakes. And I'll, actually, well, let me just start with that. I often mention things and I say, I'll get right back to it, and, and then I forget to get back to it. So let's just talk about this. This is very interesting. Uh, let me get these guys out of the way so they don't mess up the focus. Oops, still got a handle. Okay. Take a close, close look here, everybody, at this new uh, system here. Again, not entirely new. Other manufacturers have uh, done this going back. Um, who was it here? I just was doing some homework. Not that one. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Quantum has had externally adjustable centrifugal brakes for some time. Their ACS system. And I don't have any Quantum reels, and I, I, I'm pretty ignorant on them. I can't say what the internals of their braking system looks like. I just know for a number of years they've had the uh, externally adjustable ACS system. So the idea of an externally adjustable centrifugal brake is, is not new, but we are seeing some of the big players, uh, Shimano namely, and Abu Garcia doing these externally adjustable iterations, and I don't see why they would ever go back to an internally adjustable. Um, if you can have the uh, same effectiveness and not have to keep opening and closing your reel, I think this is what we're going to see uh, pretty much permanently going forward, are systems like these. So if you look at these brakes, you'll see that they're numbered. See there's a little 2 on this one, uh, which is that 6, 3, 1, 5. Kind of interesting that they don't go in order, right? And 4. What I noticed is this. Check this out. I had thought when you spin this, Actually, I do have to jump around a little bit. Let me show you this part here first. When you spin this thing here, guys, let me show you what happens. This whole plate in there, that whole kind of copper looking plate, is going to go up and go down in this dimension. Let me show you that. Let me put it on max, and then I'll bring it down for you. That'll make it easy to say. So watch that plate. I think it's pretty easy to see there. And now let me bring it up. You can see it rising. A little difficult trying to keep my hands steady, but you get the idea. There we go. If I do it fast, you can really see it. So that's what's happening here. When you turn that, all you're doing is you're raising or lowering uh, that whole plate there. And obviously you're bringing it into closer contact or further away from the brakes. What is not readily apparent, though, is that the brakes are not just all the same. They outwardly look the same, the amount of surface area and the bends and the design of them. But what I noticed is this. If you take any two brakes opposite each other, they have similar amounts of travel, but not the same. Also, all brakes have slightly different travel. So let me see if I could find here. Here we go. I think those are the middles. Right. And these are going to be the short ones. Yep. Let me push these guys down. These two right here, what is this going to be? Five and six, are opposite each other. When I push them up, like you know, this is, and they would fly out during a cast. Centrifugal force would force them out to the uh, outermost position, same as I'm pushing them out now. It's going to be hard to notice, but let's see if we could do it. Do you see how the one on the left is a little bit higher than the one on the right? One on the right is up. See, I could push him down. But he only goes up a little tiny bit. The one on the left goes up just a little bit more. See how it has a little bit more travel? A little tiny bit of travel? A little bit more. Alright, now check it out. When we go to another set of pins, this is going to be the ones that have a little bit more overall movement. So these move overall more than the first two. But the same thing, each of these two is a little bit staggered. If we look at, you can kind of see, if you look at how much light comes through that little hole there in the blue thing, okay, you see how much space you have there? See how much space you have here? This one goes up, this, you know, kind of far. This one goes up farther. 
and then the last one would be one and two. If we hold these up, look at how far that goes up, and how far that goes up. This is the higher of the two. This one goes up pretty high. This one's a little hard to see, but I could feel it with my fingers, and you could just barely see it if I can keep it still enough. There's more light coming through that little thing there. That opening is greater than this opening. So this is the kind of the, the man behind the curtain as to how this works. So not only are you moving this plate here closer and further away, but these pins, even though they're not spring-loaded, even though they all fly out, they have predetermined um, amounts, distances, that each one can move out. So it's not like all six are going to hit at once or anything like that. I had wondered about these edges. I thought the, the secret would be in uh, they would all have a little bit of different edges on top here, kind of different shapes in which they hit. But as it turns out, the pins themselves, the top of the pin that makes contact is the same shape, but you figure if this part is hitting, it's very flat. The more steeper of an angle you go, it's more of a dome part of it. And um, you figure this one here, the one that goes out the furthest, this would actually be your first pin to hit. If you were set very, very conservatively, if you were set to, you know, say a break setting of, I don't know, like one or two, this metal plate here would be the farthest away, you know, just shy of free spool, would be very far away, and the first one to hit it would be the pin that can go the furthest, which in this case would be this guy right here, right? Or is it the other side? No, it's this one, number one. And so he would come all the way out. So not only does he come out the furthest, but the top of him, there's a reason they curved that top. You'd only be getting one pin actually making contact, and it would just be a small amount of surface area. The contact patch would be right there where my finger is just barely touching. And you see how it's just like a curve. So you're not even getting, you're not even getting this flat part right there. You're getting just a curve at the top. So very minimal breaking. And then, Rather than going over and over it, I guess you guys can get the idea. As this plate goes closer and closer, this will start to flatten out a little bit, causing more friction against that pin. And likewise, then the next pin in line will start to make a little bit of contact with its curve, and then the flat part of it, and so on and so forth, until you're moving that plate all the way down, and all pins are making contact. So. Uh, it's probably more than you want to know about this braking system, but I'm always very, very interested in them. I think they're little cool pieces of engineering, and um, I figured I'd give you guys a very close look at this very unique one. Some have a lot of travel, some have very little travel, but there's, uh, they're seamless in that it's, you know, a little, a little more, a little more, etc., etc., etc. So... Very excited to get this on the water and see how it performs, but that's kind of the uh, the engineering behind the system uh, for the, what is it called again here? I'm looking at their site. ACB, Advanced Centrifugal Brake. Um, and I do like that it's six pin as opposed to the Abu Garcia version, which is four. Uh, although I must annotate in that there is a JDM Abu Garcia, which is a Revo Elite, which does utilize six pins. It's just here domestically, um, the Premier and the MGX, for whatever reason, they're just limiting it to four currently. So, um, Luz uh, is not the first. I, I think Abu Garcia was the first to do this kind of system with the six pins. And uh, Shimano's, actually, I can't comment on. I'm not sure how many pins it uses. All right, enough about that. Let's move on. All right, let's just get this guy back together here. Pull that pin, put him back together. Um, let's see here, guys. This is easy to adjust, just so you know. You can hear that click. It clicks in really good, not going to go anywhere, and very easy to do with your fingers. It's not hard at all. Just the right amount of resistance. Definitely not going to fall out. Um, but, you know, even if it was cold and my fingers were hurting or something, this is it's a nice uh, amount of resistance. To talk about the uh, that other difference here, which is a carbon fiber handle. Obviously, it's going to save some weight. And right there, you can get a good look at the weave. You can see all those layers of carbon sandwiched together. And I'm always a fan of that. Uh, Daiwa does that in some of their higher higher end uh, reels. You can see that on like the Pixie. 
you see that sandwiching and uh, I just to me that looks really really cool if you're gonna have a carbon uh, handle I like seeing the weave and I like seeing the uh, sandwiching and this one is even uh, you know cut out a little bit for a little bit more weight savings the handles here as you can see are the traditional loose handles which I think they utilize on all their reels pretty sure they do uh, these are on bearings so these are very very smooth um, the let's see the drag system clicking drag okay. clicking spool tension All right. the front line guide is an oversized line guide um, let's see here the clutch uh, only actually uh, touches on one side just like a, a Shimano system uh, different than Daiwa, which actually it's integrated into both sides, so it's just on that one side. Kind of see this side is open. A uh, good amount of resistance, nice click to it, good feel. Uh, the reel, uh, this is all subjective, but in my hand, I, I like it. Uh, it feels relatively narrow in this dimension. I don't like reels that feel too tall, it feels relatively narrow. Very, very smooth. It utilizes 10 ball bearings. Um, I did a review of the BB-1 versus Alexa last year, and I, uh, I liked the BB-1 a lot, but I ended up keeping the Alexa, and um, I've actually had some problems with my Alexa, and that's why I'm picking up uh, another reel, because I've had problems with two of my Daiwas, uh, actually. I may do a video talking about um, some of the issues I've had with various uh, pieces of equipment, uh, those reels and otherwise, but that's, that's why I have this here. I did have some issues, but in that review last year, I did comment how while it's very, very smooth, you don't feel anything. You don't have that connected to the real uh, sensation that you do in some of the better Daiwas, uh, and even some of the Shimano's, like I have a Shimano Cronark. And there's a little bit more integration. You can feel the mechanics of the reel and the gearing ever so slightly, but in a good way. This one, a lot of people will probably love this, but you can't feel anything. It's as if there are no gears in there. You just, you don't feel anything mechanical. Uh, you may love that, you may hate that, but um, it's just it's it's so smooth to the point where you don't you don't feel any gearing, whatsoever. Uh, there is a lubrication port there that is for grease, not oil. If you open that up, you're going to see the bottom of your main uh, gear there, and you definitely want to put uh, you don't want to put oil in there. You want to put grease in there if you have to do some maintenance. Uh, like many reels lately, being made in Korea, Korea seems to be doing a very good job in terms of tolerances. Um, shy of the very expensive reels which are made in Japan or some of the Abu Garcias now uh, with the very high price points the round reels are coming out of Sweden um, but Korea seems to be doing a great job with uh, their tolerances quality control haven't heard of any complaints many many reels are, are made there and uh, yeah so going back to that spool it is a uh, <laughs> they call it braid ready and all it means is that they just put a hole where is it in the spool right there so you could pass your line through it and tie it. Uh, I mentioned before, I'll just mention again, you can see the side plates are a glossy black that's because the side plates are both a composite material the center portion you can see it kinda has that matte finish that is aluminum. Right, so all this is aluminum the, uh, the reel, uh, the, the feet, the foot of the reel is aluminum and you can just see basically the color denotes what's a uh, composite plastic and what is aluminum very often in reels we'll see that the uh, this side will also be aluminum and the non-handle side will be some kind of composite um, people talk about reel flex and things like that uh, a lot of reels now are going to various carbon composites like the Shimano CI4 uh, Daiwa uses Zion which is their own material and um, Luz doesn't talk about what they use here but I'm sure it's some kind of you know strong reinforced polymer it should be very strong we'll see we'll see I'm gonna get it out and uh, I'll give my impressions after I start fishing with it. But this is just a first quick look. And I think that's it, everybody. Um, so far, uh, you know, just it's, it's a good looking reel. It's light in the hand. Let me just show you it against a couple other reels, real Excuse quick. Give you some dimensions here, guys. Um, this is a zillion. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you from the side because that's kind of the most telling. So if I line up those feet, I just want to get, give you an idea of these slenderness or lack thereof. So you see these are both kind of similar that they have those vertical 
kind of really open line guides and you see the whole front of the reel is just like really open between here and here so if I line those up you can see overall height hopefully the uh, loose feels a lot more compact in the hand and not a lot but it feels noticeably more compact than the zillion just put it next to uh, my other reels here what I got so I can show you all right guys here's a uh, die with t3 t3 is really really narrow and this front has kind of like a teardrop shape to it which comes down so amongst all the reels that that I have or many that I've held the uh, T3 and T3 Ballistic feel very, very compact in hand. And then lastly, I can uh, show you it against a Daiwa Alexa. Let's get those handles out of the way. And the Alexa also is, uh, they kind of marketed it as being a very compact, very small in the hand reel. And it definitely is. And here's a very prominent, you can almost see, you know, this looks like a hood on top. And if we line up those feet there, you can see the lack thereof on the Daiwa. And you feel that in the hand. Uh, as well as, of course, this dimension. You know, I didn't show you the other reels, but uh, this one here has kind of like a Cronarch 200 series, I guess, overall shape to it. It definitely bows out on the side, as opposed to some of the reels that are considerably more narrow. But um, uh, in the hand, though, I really, you know, it's nothing to quibble over. Feels lightweight, feels good, conforms to the hand, unless you have very, very, very small hands. But, um, yeah, overall, I think it feels good. So, anyway, guys, um, can't really think of anything else I want to tell you on this. It's just a preliminary look, and I know it's a really, really long one, but uh, I tend to go into a lot of detail. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, this has been the Lose Speed Spool. BB1 Pro. Thanks for watching.